I welcome you back to this lecture series on aircraft performance. So till now we have discussed the analytical and graphical method to calculate the rate of climb that is in this case a steady rate of climb. Also we have seen equations to calculate the velocity, the angle of climb and the rate of climb. So before moving on uh, to go and calculate the maximum rate of climb and uh, the maximum angle of attack and the corresponding velocities, I would like to uh, give a sample problem that goes like this. So the power available and power required values are given and these values are at the velocity of 150 feet per second and the weight of the aircraft is uh, 2950 pounds so in this case we have to calculate uh, the rate of climb for this piston driven uh, aircraft we will see how to uh, go through this how to calculate it's a very straight away problem and these values of power available and power required we have got from the previous example I will show you the detailed methodology of how to work out these problems using uh, Microsoft Excel as well. So, but for now, you can pause this video right here. You can try this problem and come out with the rate of climb value. I hope you got the answer. So, let's see how to solve this problem. You see, if you can recall equation number 5, which says that rate of climb is nothing but the ratio of excess power to the weight of the aircraft. Excess power represents it is a difference between the total power available and the power required for a piston engine. So in this case, for a piston engine, the power available remains constant, whereas the power required varies with velocity. Now for this case, we are not uh, trying to draw the graph. In fact, we are just trying to get the value of rate of climb. If I substitute all the values uh, in the equation, I get the rate of climb as 23.3 feet per second. It tells that the vertical velocity of the aircraft is 23.3 feet every second or in other words the aircraft gains an altitude of 23.3 feet every second at the velocity of 150 meter per second where the power required is 32,582 pound feet per second. So for this a given power rating and for the given velocity the rate of climb what we obtained is 23.3 feet per second now if I draw a graph for varying velocity if I change the velocity let's start from 100 feet per second and we can uh, go up for this particular example up to 170 feet per second or you can still go on I will show you how to solve this problem in Microsoft Excel how to get the graph. So when you see this variation of rate of climb with the velocity you can observe initially the rate of climb increases as the velocity increases but after reaching a maximum point the rate of climb starts declining as the velocity is increased. Now we will see how I got this particular graph. So this is an Excel sheet for the given values for the corresponding aircraft. So in this case, let's call it as CP1, the piston engine, with the rated power of 550 HP at sea level. So the weight I'm going to input as 2950 pounds, and the platform area is given as 174 feet square. So I'm trying to convert all the units that is given in FPS to the SI unit, and the aspect ratio is given as 1.37, and CD0, that is the zero lift angle of drag, that is 0 0.025 and the Oswald efficiency factor as 0 0.8 and the K value that is the lift dependent coefficient value 0 0.054 and the velocity for this particular uh, problem was 150 but this conversion I have included just to show different types in case if it is given in SI I can convert it into feet per second or if it is given in feet per second I want to convert it into uh, the SI unit just to check the values then if it is uh, the, if the altitude is sea level it could be zero temperature at sea level is the 288 Kelvin that is the standard international standard atmosphere 
and the density is given as 8.91 into 10 power minus 4 slug per feet cube right? that I can convert it into kg per meter cube so the left hand side is to write the given data from FPS to SI or from SI to FPS units now here comes the interesting part the right hand side where I have tabulated values I started with the velocity let's say I begin with 100 feet per second and moved up to 410 feet per second and the corresponding velocities in meter per second then the coefficient of lift is calculated using the lift formula that is L is equal to half rho V square SCL so in this case only unknown is coefficient of lift we know the lift weight and the density at sea level of course Planform area and the velocity by inputting all the values I could able to get the value of coefficient of lift and once I have coefficient of lift I know CD naught and I know K uh, based on drag polar which is CD is equal to CD naught plus KCL square I can calculate the velocity of the net coefficient of drag that for this particular case I got it as 0.135 and then I can go on to calculate CL by CD which is nothing but lift to drag ratio then using that uh, value of CD in turn I am going to calculate the drag which is nothing but the thrust required so once I get the thrust required if I multiply this thrust required value with the corresponding velocity I am going to get the power required for that particular velocity so that would be of course in this case since I have converted all the units into uh, SI I'm going to get the value of power in watts then I'm going to convert it into HP and correspondingly I'm going to convert it into pounds feet per second why pounds per second because that is what uh, is given in the problem so I will finally convert it into pound feet per second and the power available value will al almost remains constant for a piston engine aircraft so I have the power required power available and the velocity so I'm going to take these three values in the next Excel sheet and then I could able to draw a scatter graph and it looks like this. Here I have the variation of power available and power required with respect to the velocity. Now if I continue this exploration into the calculation of rate of climb because in order to calculate rate of climb I need both the values power available and power required so I will use a new sheet to extract these values from the previous sheet so I, in the first column I have the extra additional data required so that is power available uh, aircraft weight and L by D max so on and so forth and in the second column I have the power required in the third I have the velocity and in the last two columns I have the rate of climb in both feet per second and feet per minute the methodology is like this first I need power required then I have power available then for the corresponding velocity what is the power required then I can calculate rate of climb for varying uh, velocities so if I draw a graph for varying velocity I'm going to get this variation between rate of climb and uh, the velocity I can extend this graph further to see how it behaves for still higher values of velocities you see this is how it looks I can extend it up to 400 no issues but if I observe carefully the rate of climb is going negative after uh, 260 feet per second right so which means that is its maximum velocity may not be the case right that depends on the power available and power required curves so that is how I got this particular graph you can export the graph from Excel to the PowerPoint so that is what I have done here if you can observe carefully the rate of climb increases from 100 to 110 feet per second and it reaches its maximum value of 25 feet per second it may not be the case we will go we are going to calculate the theoretical value as well but for our time being in this particular graph if you observe you can see uh, the maximum rate of climb it reached is 25 feet per second so after which the velocity as you increase the velocity the rate of climb is going to decline in other words I cannot reduce the velocity beyond 110 feet per second 
where it goes to a region of unstable velocity even when if i try to climb the aircraft with that particular uh, rate of climb the aircraft is not going to climb stably so the stable region is always beyond the maximum rate of climb values where the rate of climb values keeps on decreasing so those velocities i can use to climb right so that is the meaning of this particular graph so in the previous uh, concept we have understood how to calculate the rate of climb and the corresponding velocity if i know the free stream velocity and the rate of climb i can input these values and get the value of angle of climb using the equation sin theta is equal to rate of climb by free stream velocity let's call this as equation number 7 for angle of climb now the next question we should ask is if i know rate of climb if i know angle of climb what are its maximum values can i keep on increasing the rate of climb or can i climb at any angle of a time is it possible so that is a question we are going to answer in the coming sections so in that the first section is the maximum climb angle so what is the maximum climb angle let's try to recall equation number 4 that is the rate of climb is equal to the power available minus the power required by the gross weight of the aircraft which is nothing but v infinity sin theta now dividing the whole equation by v infinity i get sin theta is equal to thrust minus drag divided by w whereas on both lhs and rhs i have cancelled the v infinity i further simplify by dividing w to both thrust and drag and by representing for a steady climb flight we already discussed that the lift is w times the cos theta if i solve this for w i can get w is equal to lift by cos theta this i am going to substitute in the equation of the term which includes the drag which is l by cos theta and then further simplifying i could able to get sin theta is equal to the thrust to weight ratio minus cos theta by l by d see the beauty of this derivation is i am trying to convert all the parameters into the ratios what are the ratios you can see in this particular equation one is thrust to weight ratio we have discussed already what is the significance of this and then the other is lift to drag ratio so this significance also we know from the derivation of equations of motion performance analysis and even from rate of if i assume the angle of climb is less then cos theta value is 1 so if cos theta is 1 then the equation gets reduced to sin theta is equal to thrust to weight ratio minus 1 by l by d now for maximum angle of climb the l by d value should be maximum because 1 by l by d max is nothing but the minimum value and the difference will be the maximum so thrust to weight ratio is constant for a given aircraft and for the given velocity so for a given velocity and for the given thrust the angle of climb will be maximum when you fly the aircraft at l by d max now we have understood from the previous discussion that l by d max condition is nothing but 1 by under root of 4 cd not into k where cd not is zero lift drag coefficient so if i substitute this value back into the equation i get the equation for maximum angle of climb as sin theta max is equal to thrust to weight ratio minus under root of 4 cd not into k let's call this as equation number 8 now at this point i want you to pause this video and write down few observations what you can infer from this particular equation so first observation i would like to make is higher the thrust to weight ratio higher will be the angle of climb isn't it it is directly proportional and if the parasite drag that is cd not if it is less higher will be the angle of climb it is obvious if you think properly lower the drag higher will be the angle of climb 
as obvious as that. Here is the mathematical proof for the claim. Also, theta max is directly proportional to lift to drag ratio. Higher the lift to drag ratio, higher will be the angle of climb. Very important observation you have to make here, that is, the angle of climb does not depend on wing loading, that is W by S. You don't see any platform area term in this particular equation. Moreover, moving on to the next observation, as the altitude increases, thrust decreases, which results in decrement in angle of climb, right? So these are all the observations for this particular equation. Now we will try to understand the velocity corresponding to the maximum angle of climb. Now we got an equation to calculate maximum angle of climb, but I need to calculate at what velocity if I flow the aircraft, the angle of climb will be maximum. Right? So it is logical to calculate velocity corresponding to the maximum angle of climb. And next in the process is to calculate or what is the rate of climb to achieve maximum angle of climb. Right? So these two equations we will try to get. For a steady climb, I can write L is equal to W cos theta max. Since we are discussing about maximum angle of climb, I am going to substitute all the values of theta as theta max. So for this particular case, I can equate this to half rho v square s c l. V infinity here represents the free stream velocity for corresponding maximum angle of climb. Right? So this equation, I can simplify it as half rho v infinity square for theta max into s and of course CL, I'm going to replace it by under root of CD naught by K. Because theta max is happening at L by D max. And the condition for L by D max from our previous analysis is the parasite drag is equal to the lift dependent drag. That is CD naught is equal to KCL square. Using this, I'm going to simplify, get the expression for coefficient of lift, which is nothing but the under root of cd naught by k. This I am going to substitute in the equation. For a jet propelled aircraft, I can solve the equation for free stream velocity for maximum angle of climb. I get this particular equation. I call this as equation number 9. So at this point, I want you to pause the video and do few observations for this particular equation. So the first observation I would like to make here is the involvement of the term wing loading. In the previous case, that is when I calculated the maximum angle of climb, I didn't find wing loading term, that is W by S. But here W by S has been introduced and it is directly proportional. That is the velocity, free stream velocity is directly proportional to wing loading W by S. The rate of climb is higher for higher wing loading. More the wing loading, higher will be the rate of climb. Now if I know the angle of climb and the corresponding velocity to achieve that angle of climb, I can easily calculate the rate of climb. So using equation number 4, I am going to substitute all the values I have calculated till now, that is the maximum angle of climb and velocity corresponding to maximum angle of climb. If I substitute these two values, I get the rate of climb for maximum angle of climb, right? So that is nothing but ROC theta max.